My friends, today we celebrate the feast of the Basilica of St. Mary Major in Rome. Typically, the church celebrates a saint, a holy person, but today we celebrate the dedication of a holy place. St. Mary Major's claims to be the first church dedicated to Our Lady, and like everything in Rome, there is a story behind it. Back in the fourth century, Pope Liberius wondered if he should dedicate a church to the Blessed Mother. Most of the churches in Rome were dedicated to martyrs who had died in the many persecutions in the city. Indeed, many of the churches were built on the site of the home of these martyrs, where the Christian community gathered secretly to worship. Anyway, Pope Liberius had a dream, and in the dream he was instructed to build a church on, a, on the site where he would find snow the following morning. So lo and behold, the following day, August 5th, in the heat of a Roman summer, it had snowed on the Esquiline Hill, one of the seven hills of Rome. And there, the original church was built where the basilica now stands. And that's why for many years, it was called the Church of Our Lady of the Snows. And today on the feast, to record this wondrous event, white rose petals are showered from the dome of the church on the people who gather to celebrate the feast day. Churches are formally dedicated to remind us that they are sacred places, places where we encounter and worship God, places where God dwells and where, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join with the Son in giving praise and thanks to God. And it is truly fitting that a church be dedicated in honour of Mary, the Mother of God. As Jesus reminds us in the Gospel text today, Mary heard the Word of God. Mary heard the Word and observed it. She conformed her life so perfectly to the Word of God that it physically took hold of her. Mary heard the Word. Mary bore the Word. Mary gave birth to the Word. In the Basilica, below the main altar, there are relics reputedly from the manger of the creche in Bethlehem, in which Mary laid the newborn saviour of the world. How appropriate that is. On a visit to Mary Majors, Pope Francis described Mary as an icon of the church, an icon, an image of what the church is called to be. Mary heard the word, Mary bore the word, Mary gave birth to the word. And that's what the church is called to do. That is the vocation of every Christian woman and man. Hear the word of God. Let it grow within you. Give birth, give flesh and blood to the God's word by the way we live, by the things we say and do. Make God present among us. A question. Which is the mo most beautiful church dedicated to Mary that you know? Which one? Well, here in the Archdiocese of Boston, there are many contenders. The good people of Charlestown are rightly proud of their St. Mary's. The people of Mission Hill would propose their own mighty basilica of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Then there is St. Mary Star of the Sea in Beverly, not to mention the beautiful Immaculate Conception in Lowell. But forgive me, forgive me if I suggest that the honour must go to our own Gate of Heaven in South Boston. If you haven't been there, you must make a visit, if only online. I choose it for three reasons. First, the elegant neo-Gothic building stands nobly on a hill overlooking the whole neighbourhood of South Boston. It's like a mother protecting those who live in her shadow. Secondly, the beautiful stained glass windows in that church cast dappled light on those who gather to worship there, 
reminding us that we are daughters and sons of God that are deeply loved, that we are precious, precious in God's sight. And thirdly, well, the name, the name Gate of Heaven. Yes, it is a title of Mary. It reminds us that the Savior entered the world through the one who heard the word of God and observed it. It also assures us that salvation is ours when, with Mary as model and guide, we hear the word of God, we let it grow within us, and we give birth, give flesh and blood to God's word. We give flesh and blood to God's word by the way we live and the things that we say and do.